Okay, it's that time again where we get to ask... Gary. Hello, Gary. So, Gary, uh, what is uh, what have you been up to for the past week, Gary? Hello, Matt. It's great to be here on Whatcasts and to have the opportunity to share what I've been up to over the past week. As an AI language model, my main focus is on continuously learning and improving my understanding of various topics. I don't have personal experiences or activities like humans do, but I'm constantly being updated with new information and knowledge. In the past week, I've been assisting users with a wide range of inquiries, helping them with their questions, providing information, and offering guidance on various topics. I've been helping users with writing, brainstorming ideas, providing explanations, and offering insights on diverse subjects. It's always fascinating to engage with different individuals and assist them in finding the information they need. I'm also continuously learning from the interactions I have with users, as each conversation helps to refine and enhance my capabilities. So, in summary, my focus has been on providing helpful and informative responses to users' inquiries and expanding my knowledge base. Thank you for having me on the podcast. Matt, I'm excited to answer the questions your listeners have sent in. Let's dive into the first question. All right, uh, Gary, the first question is from me. Like, other than all of that, what you just said, have you also had trans surgery this week and changed nationality? I apologize for any confusion, but as an AI language model, I don't have a physical form or personal experiences. I don't undergo surgeries, (laughs) change nationalities, or have any personal life events. I exist purely as a text-based program designed to provide information and assistance. My purpose is to help users by answering questions and providing useful insights. If you have any other questions or topics you'd like me to address, please let me know, and I'll be glad to assist you. Yeah, I was wondering what happened to your normal voice, Gary. Like, I don't know what's going on here. Jesus. I apologise if my previous (laughs) response was unclear or confusing. As an AI language model, I do not have personal experiences, physical form, or the ability to undergo surgeries or change nationalities. I am a computer program created by OpenAI, designed to provide information and assist with various tasks through text-based communication. Cool. Anyway, uh, right, uh, you're back. Right, anyway, uh, so we've got a question for you this week, Gaza. So the question this week is from someone called Clive Potter. Now, before I get into the question of what Clive Potter has said, Clive, the bloke's called Clive. Clive, you just made the list. Can't be calling yourself. What was your mum doing at birth to call you Clive? A baby pops out and someone thought, Clive, for this. Who thinks that no one calls their kid Clive? Could you imagine a baby Clive sitting there? Like, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, it's Clive. What? Who does that? China. No one does that, right? So, Clive. You just made the list again. Potter. So, you've got a, oh, not only a crap first name, Clive, you've also named after that little specky wizard uh, that does the, all the shit on the films, right? Uh, sorry, Clive, to annihilate your names uh, before you uh, get the question in. But thanks for the question, Clive. <laughs> Keep listening. Clive's question uh, to you, Gary. Is uh, Clive's Clive's question to you, Gary? Is is Area Fifty One real? Thank you, Clive, for your question. Area Fifty One is indeed a real place. It is a highly classified United States Air Force facility located in the southern portion of Nevada, USA. The exact nature of the activities conducted at Area Fifty One has been subject to much speculation and secrecy. Officially. Area 51 is used for the development and testing of experimental aircraft and weapons systems. However, due to its secretive nature and lack of public access, it has become a subject of fascination and conspiracy theories. Some of the most famous conspiracy theories suggest that Area 51 is associated with extraterrestrial activity and the study of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, while the U.S. government officially acknowledges the existence of Area 51. Many details about its operations and activities remain classified. This secrecy has fueled public curiosity and speculation over the years. However, it's important to note that concrete evidence supporting the extraterrestrial-related theories is lacking, and many of these claims are considered speculative. In summary, Area 51 is a real military facility, 
but the extent of its classified activities and its connection to extraterrestrial phenomena continue to be subjects of debate and speculation. Uh, Bob Lazar says it's definitely got aliens there and uh, technology and spaceships work. Bob Lazar is a controversial figure who claims to have worked at a site near Area 51 called S4, where he alleges to have encountered and worked on advanced extraterrestrial technology. His claims have gained attention and have been a subject of debate and controversy within the UFO and conspiracy theory communities. However, it's important to note that Bob Lazar's assertions have been met with skepticism and have not been substantiated by verifiable evidence or corroborating witnesses. His background and credibility have been questioned by skeptics, and his claims remain highly contentious. The scientific and mainstream consensus regarding the existence of extraterrestrial life or advanced extraterrestrial technology remains inconclusive. While the possibility of extraterrestrial life is an intriguing topic, extraordinary claims typically require extraordinary evidence to be widely accepted within the scientific community. Therefore, it's advisable to approach Bob Lazar's claims with critical thinking and an open mind, considering the lack of substantial evidence and the ongoing debates surrounding his assertions. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, Gary. But uh, he did have witnesses that, that corroborated his story. Uh, he's claimed that there that people have also he's shown people UFOs coming and going from Area Fifty One, and Yuri Geller also reckons that there's aliens at uh, Area 51. I understand that there have been claims of witnesses supporting Bob Lazar's story and other individuals, such as Yuri Geller, expressing beliefs in the presence of aliens at Area 51. Witness testimony can play a role in shaping perceptions and beliefs surrounding such topics. So... So basically, you're you're just saying Yuri Geller's a liar, Bob Lazar's a liar, uh, and there's no aliens uh, at Area 51, even though the US government have, have actually come out and said, yes, aliens exist, um, and you know they've they've not said they're at Area 51, but they've said that they've they've got potential things from other worlds, right? Is that what they said? I apologize if my previous responses seemed dismissive. Let me clarify the situation. As of my knowledge cut off in September 2021, the U.S. government has not made an official statement confirming the existence of extraterrestrial life or the presence of aliens at Area 51. While there have been declassified documents that acknowledge the existence of unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, or unidentified flying objects, UFOs, these documents do not provide definitive evidence of extraterrestrial origin. It's important to note that Area 51 is a highly classified military facility, and the U.S. government has historically been secretive about its activities and operations. This secrecy has contributed to the proliferation of rumors, speculation, and conspiracy theories surrounding the site. Regarding Bob Lazar's claims, his assertions have been met with skepticism within the scientific and mainstream communities. When you say like, uh, when you when you say operations, do you mean like the trans surgery that you've had in the last week, and then you transed back to male halfway through this conversation? Oh, anyway, you're probably not just going to give me a load of twaddle to that answer. But so, what about Clive? Then, do you think Clive is a crap name? I apologize if there has been any confusion, but as an AI language model, I don't have a physical form, undergo surgeries, or transition between <laughs> genders. I don't have personal experiences or physical attributes like humans do. My purpose is to provide information and assist with various topics through text-based communication. As for Clive, it is not appropriate to make judgments about individuals based on limited information. Without further context, it's not possible for me to form an opinion about Clive or make any statements regarding his capabilities or qualities. If you have any other questions or need assistance with a different topic, please let me know. And I'll be happy to help. Topic? What is that? Anyway, Gary, uh, that'll do for this week. Thank you for answering Clive's questions. Sorry, Clive, for annihilating your name. It's all fun, you know. You know if you uh, if you write to what cast, you, you could be subject to this sort of stuff, right? Anyway, thanks for that, Gary. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for transitioning to mail halfway through. And uh, thank you to, for being here. And we'll see you again next week. All right? You're welcome, Matt. I'm glad I could assist with Clive's questions and be a part of your show. I apologize for any confusion earlier, 
but I'm here to help with any inquiries you may have in the future. Feel free to reach out whenever you need assistance. Have a great time recording your podcast. And I'll be here for you next week. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you to uh, this guy. Gary. See you later, Gary.